like that? Looks like a strange ocean liner sailing on a frozen sea. There is the North Pole. No, not really. <laughs> okay, I've had my fun. Let's talk about the Polar Express. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Joe and today I'm here to talk to you guys about my all-time favorite Christmas movie The Polar Express directed by Robert Zemeckis starring Tom Hanks in various roles Daryl Sabera and the late Michael Jeter Nona Gay and Some other people you may or may not recognize depending on how deep you are into film knowledge and so on The Polar Express is based on a children's book by Chris Van Allsburg And it tells the story of this young boy who's about eight years old And he's on the verge of losing his faith in Santa and the Polar Express arrives and he has one last chance to reaffirm his belief He goes through his own journey of reaffirming his belief in Santa and the North Pole and the spirit of Christmas I don't really know what exactly the consensus is for the Polar Express Although I'm sure some people have their opinions in regards to certain things in this film There's some things in here that don't quite work for me personally like the hobo character played by Tom Hanks and there are times where this movie does drag on a little bit where it has to show this really big sequence that's not entirely necessary but I think that this is a really good story of how a young boy is able to find his way to reaffirming his faith again as he's growing older to the point where he starts to question things and wonder is this really all that it's cracked up to be or is this all just some kind of a big hoax now since this is a feature film there's a lot of stuff that they add in here because the book is really short. That's to be expected when you adapt something into a movie like this. I think that this is actually a faithful recreation of the book. And the fact that this movie came out 15 years ago, that's just insanity. I still remember the first time I saw the trailer, hearing Tom Hanks' narration saying, I was listening for a sound that I was afraid I would never hear. It's when I realized the Polar Express. They're making a Polar Express movie. The music, the visuals, the reveal of the train, it commanded my attention. And then the following year, when we saw it on opening weekend, it was me, my mom, my sister, and my grandma. I remember just being so enthralled when I saw this movie. And as I said, it's my favorite Christmas movie of all time. And A Charlie Brown Christmas, that's a Christmas special, but that's definitely up there for me as far as like favorites. This is also made by Robert Zemeckis, who brought us movies like Back to the Future, Forrest Gump, Castaway, Flight, The Walk. Tom Hanks does the motion capture work and acting for certain characters like the conductor, the hobo, Santa, and even does the mocap work for the main character, Hero Boy, as he's supposedly called. He's not called that in the movie, but you get what I mean. But Daryl Sabera, who you might know from Spy Kids, he's the voice of the boy. And Nona Gay voices the girl, as Hero Girl, as she's called. And then you also have Jimmy Bennett, who does the voice of Billy, the young boy who isolates himself from the rest of the group on the train. Since I mentioned the motion capture work, I think for the most part, it does hold up. There are some moments where it does look a little obvious that it's from 2004 and it looks kind of lifeless in certain scenes But I think for the most part it does hold up But the color palette I think is very rich and it does good at representing the tone where it's kind of dark in some scenarios Considering what the boy goes through but it's also good at reflecting the holiday season And then you got the score by Alan Silvestri that music has stuck with me ever since Alan Silvestri's done music for Back to the Future and even the main theme for the Avengers da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. And it's actually echoed in the song Believe by Josh Groban who did the song for this movie and I believe that it was Oscar nominated for best original song. I really like that song personally. It always brings back those Christmas feelings for me that I had when I was a kid celebrating the holidays. And there's other great songs in this movie too, like the Hot Chocolate song and When Christmas Comes to Town, which I think is a really, really beautiful scene. And kind of how the boy Billy feels very lonely considering his impoverished lifestyle. And the girl sings along with him to try to brighten his spirits up. And the hero boy's just standing in the background watching this happen. Oh, oh man. I don't want to sound like a sap or anything, but touches the heart somewhere. <laughs> And I think the characters are well realized for the most part. The hero girl is not really the most developed character, but they do a good job of showing how much initiative she has and how she's not afraid to take on a challenge and how certain she is. But she does experience some moments of uncertainty whenever the hero boy says, are you sure? Are you sure? But then finally, when they're trying to find the sound of the bell in the North Pole, and he asks her again, are you sure? And she goes, absolutely. And then the boy, Billy, we don't really know a whole ton about him, but from the house that he lives in and how he says Christmas just doesn't work out for me, you could tell that he doesn't have the greatest home life and that he hasn't really gotten a lot of Christmas presents that he's wanted, probably because his parents can't really afford to buy him what he wants, or that maybe it's a broken home. We're not exactly sure what's going on. And you can't really help but feel for the kid and how, at least for me, you really want him to just have a really good Christmas and have some friends that he can talk to and rely on. And then there's Tom Hanks. 
Do I have to say anything else? I think he's arguably the greatest actor in today's day and age. He plays the conductor, Santa, and then there's the hobo that he plays, the ghost that lives on top of the train. The conductor may seem a bit stubborn and cold-hearted, but at the very end, he does give the kids some good words of wisdom and how to believe in the good things in life and know what your strengths are and use those to your advantage to influence those around you. Then there's the hobo that's also played in mocap by Tom Hanks. This character I've been really iffy on because he's very creepy and just really odd, but also kind of funny like where he says, is there something I can do for you? I'm looking for a girl. A girl. <laughs> hey, we all? <laughs> yeah, I hop aboard this Rattler anytime I feels like it. In fact, I am the king of the North Pole! Now, I'm sure there's been some talk over the years on who exactly this character is and what his deal is. Maybe there's some deleted scenes that explain why exactly he's a ghost. It's not really clear in the film, but whatever your thoughts are on this guy, he actually ends up helping the boy come to the point of realization that everything that he's seeing is real. And he decides to take that leap of faith and believe that Santa's real. Like when the boy says, I wanna believe, but you don't wanna be bamboozled. You don't wanna be brought down the Brimrose path. You don't wanna be conned or duped. You don't wanna be taken for a ride, railroaded. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, I've experienced feelings like that before, especially before I became a believer, where I wanted to believe that there was a God, but I didn't know for sure if that was just gonna have the rug pulled down from underneath me, and pretty sure that other people have had that experience too, where they're not really sure if they wanna take that leap of faith because they're afraid they're gonna be fooled, but at some point you do have to decide for yourself after certain things that you experience in life, do I take that leap or do I just sit in the sideline waiting for something else to happen? Anybody can relate to that, anybody. Especially the line where the conductor says, sometimes seeing is believing, and sometimes the most real things in the world are the things we can't see. Then you also got some really exciting sequences in here, like when they go atop Glacier Gulch and go on that roller coaster ride, and then when they end up on the ice and try to avoid getting caught in the water as the ice starts to break, where Tom Hanks goes, right, left, hang a Louie, toss a Richie. Now, I've seen this movie multiple times, but Every time I watch it, it puts me on the edge of my seat. It's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Then there's a sequence where the boy loses the ticket and this one long shot of it following the ticket as it lands in the trees and the train rolls by through the woods and this pack of wolves runs by, which is a nice visual nod to the book, by the way. And then it ends up in the beak of this eagle and then it somehow lands right back onto the train in perfectly good condition, by the way. But then there's also the part where the three kids get separated from the rest of the train and they end up on this turntable. There are times where it does kind of feel like a video game level, you're trying to progress from one point to the next. Sometimes it gets a little too much, especially like when they're inside that bag being carried by that hovercraft and it almost crashes into the Christmas tree. I think that scene is a little unnecessary, but I can let it go. And since this is directed by Robert Zemeckis, there's not that many filmmakers out there that has a style that he has. He has this really good way of introducing really intense and exciting shots into his movies, similar to Back to the Future and in the movie Flight. It keeps you on the edge of your seat and you're like, oh man, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And he even has a couple of nods to his Back to the Future trilogy, like when the hero boy stops the train for Billy and how the train comes up towards the camera. It's just like when Clara stops the train in Back to the Future 3. Or like when somebody calls Marty chicken. What's wrong McFly? Chicken? Every time the hero boy says to the girl, Are you sure? And at one point when the two engineers are trying to figure out, where's the pin? Where's the pin? You can briefly see the flux capacitor in the train cabinet. And then there's also when Santa takes off into the night with his reindeer, the way it disappears into thin air with the trails behind, just like the time machine in Back to the Future, whenever it goes through time, the fire trails are left behind. <laughs> Eventually things do come to a head when Santa finally is introduced to the crowd and then there's this one bell from the group of reindeer and it flies off, lands right next to his feet and he finally accepts that everything he's seeing is real and he takes that leap of faith and says, I believe. <laughs> Virtually every time I watch it, I get shivers. So Santa chooses the hero boy to give him the first gift of Christmas and the boy asks for the bell to which Santa responds, indeed. Yes, indeed. But then as he's going back home, he ends up losing the bell and he goes back home wondering, was that all just a dream? Was it real? But then he ends up getting the bell for Christmas and realizing that it was real. It did happen. And then it ends with a narration from Tom Hanks saying that at one point in time, most of my friends and my sister could hear, but then they started to lose faith as they got older. And he says, though I've grown old, 
the bell still rings for me, as it does for all who truly believe. So overall, The Polar Express is, I think, a really great Christmas movie that puts you right into the holiday spirit. Even though there are some sequences where it goes on a little too long and sometimes the tone is a little bit creepy in certain scenes, I still think it's a really good movie that you can watch with your friends and your family around the holidays. It puts you right back in the Christmas spirit. So what were your guys' thoughts on The Polar Express? Do you love it? Like it? Think it's all right? Or do you hate it? Whatever the case is, comment below and tell me your thoughts and have a great Christmas.